Hi everyone, this is Zach from Peeling Back Data, and today I'll be teaching the introduction to the course Graphical and Visual Analysis in R. In this course, we'll primarily be using the package ggplot, and today I'll run you through from the start how to visualize data using it. Here's an example of one of the plots that we'll be looking at today, which is a fairly basic introductory graph. Later in the course, we'll develop much more complicated graphics. Now for today's lesson, the first thing I want to do is install ggplot. Now to do this, you simply go tools, install packages, and then start typing in ggplot. And it'll show up here as ggplot2. And then you just need to click install. In my case, I already have it installed on my computer, so I'm not going to do that. Now you need to load in that library. So you simply type in library ggplot2. And I'm going to run that using control enter, or you can use command enter on a Mac. Now let's look at the fundamentals of how ggplot works. There are three aspects that we need to look at. And the first one is the data. So the data is basically the information that you're providing to ggplot for it to use for the graphic. The second thing is the aesthetics. So this tells ggplot what aspects of that data it needs to look at. So what variables or columns it needs to load in. And the third thing is the geometries or the geoms. So this tells R, or this tells ggplot rather, how to draw or how to view that data that you've loaded in. So whether that be bars or lines or points. Now, we will cover these three aspects in this video, but there are other aspects that we'll discuss in later videos. So for today's lesson, we're going to use a pre-installed data set in R called Iris. And we can call on the helper function here by using the question mark to look at the Iris data set. So the Iris data set looks at three different species and analyzes four and has four continuous variables for the sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width. And we can view this data set by typing view and then typing iris. So we can see here that species has three levels, and this is a discrete variable, and then we have the four columns for the other variables which are continuous. And this is important to note before we start our analysis. So the first thing that we'll be doing to analyze this data is we'll be doing a scatter plot between pedal width and pedal length. So how do we start this? So the first thing we need to do is we need to say ggplot and then we need to tell it what the data is. So in this case, it's Iris. So we can run that. But you can see we just have a blank canvas. And this is because we haven't told ggplot yet what the aesthetics are. So now we need to say mapping equals aesthetics. And then we need to specify an x and y axis in this case. So we can say x equals pedal dot width. And we can say y equals pedal dot length. You won't always have to provide an x and y axis. Sometimes it will just be the x. Sometimes it might be x, y, and a z. It just depends on how you're analyzing the data. So now we can see we have pedal length and pedal width. But at this point, we don't have any points. So add, add points to the data. Importantly, we want to run our geom point, which is that third thing specifying the geometries. And we'll go ahead and put that on the next line so it's a bit easier to see. So great, now we've got points on our graph. But there's another thing that I notice here that isn't great, and that is the pedal width and pedal length labels aren't as nice as they could be, and they don't have any units. 
So to change this, we can quickly look at the RS data set. And if we scroll to the top here, we can see that it was actually measured in centimeters. So we can specify this on the graph by adding labs x equals pedal width in centimeters. And then we can say y equals the pedal length also in centimeters. So now we get, can go ahead and run that and we can see our nice updated labels. Now, another thing that we can do to make this graph a bit more visually appealing and also to provide a bit more information is to include the species information. So to do this, we can color it by species. So you might think that you might be able to just type color equals species here, but if you do that, ggplot doesn't know what you're talking about and it doesn't know where species is coming from. So it's very important that we put this on the aesthetic. So we can type here mapping equals aesthetic and then we say that the color equals species. So now we can nicely see that we've got species on the graph. So this tells us now nicely how petal width and petal length are behaving for each species. You can also do this another way by putting the color on the initial ggplot component. So you can simply type in here color equals species and you'll get the same result. Now that we've created this nice scatter plot, we might want to save this. So to do this in ggplot, you simply type in gg save. Now def by default, it will just use the last plot to save. So we can simply just type in here plot png so giving it a file extension so png in this case and then we can run that and it will save that image now there's a second way that you can do this as well so if we specified that this ggplot was actually assigned to pt1 then we can do gg save give the file name and then tell it what object that we want to save so both of these methods work Now, a third thing that we can do when saving it, or another option that we can do, is that we can say the file name, so plot PNG, but then we can specify the height and the width of the graphic that we want to output. So changing how uh, the graph looks. So you can say height equals five, for example, and the width equals 10, if we want to make the plot wide and we will specify a units. And we'll go ahead and call this plot underscore white. Great. So that now sums up our look at the scatter plot. But there's another way that we can analyze this data, and that might be through using a box plot. So for this box plot, we'll start off similarly to how we did last time. So we'll run ggplot, we'll tell ggplot what the data is, so in this case iris, we'll say mapping equals aesthetic. Now since we're doing a box plot, we want categorical data on the x-axis, so in this case we can use the species, so we'll say x equals species, and we'll say that y, we can just choose that to be the pedal width. So that's all right, but we don't have the geomnet or the geometries. So to add that, we need to now add geom box plot. And now you can see that we have a nice box plot, but it's not very visually appealing. So to change this, what we can do is we can add some color to it. So similarly to before, we can just go up here and we can say color equals species. I just need to get rid of that extra plus down there. And run it one more time, and there you go. So that's a common error that can happen sometimes in ggplot. You can leave uh, an, a, an additional plus at the end of your commands, and that can throw it off. So just make sure that you're careful with that. So now we can see we've added color to the graph. 
which is nice because it easily differentiates now between the three different species. But we can also, instead of using color, we can use the fill. So this will now change the fill in the box plot, which is nice because it adds a solid color and it makes it a bit more easier to recognize between the different species. Now, there's something else that we can do here as well. And that, of course, is the labels. So we, like last time, we'll just make the labels a bit nicer. So species is the same, but the petal width, we just need to specify the units. So this graphic's nice, but what if, for example, we wanted to change the color scheme? So to do this, we can use something called scale fill manual, or you can use scale color manual if you're looking at colors, and then you specify the values of the colors that you want to use. So in this case, we know that species has three different levels. So we need to specify three levels for three values rather. So to do this, I am simply going to say C green, red, and sky blue. So now we can see that that added a bit more flair to the graph, and I personally think it looks a bit nicer. One final thing that we can do is add a theme. To do this, I'm going to use the theme black white, just to make it a bit more minimal and make the graph pop a bit more. So I will go into more detail on colors and themes in another lesson, but you can see here that there's lots of customization that can be made already in ggplot. And now again, we might want to save this graphic so we can use ggsave and we can call it plot underscore box plot dot png. Cool. So that sums up the scatter plot and box plot that I wanted to show you guys today, just as the quick introduction. But final thing I want to show was this website, which is provides a massive help when you're going through ggplot and you need some guidance, and that's going to the ggplot2.tidyverse.org website. And I hope this already opened in my browser so I can quickly show you. So when you come to the page, there's a nice cheat sheet here which tells you about the different geoms and different shortcuts that you can do in ggplot. So as like a nice example graph here. But then the key thing that you want to look at is reference. So this will tell you the plot basics and all the different layers, all the different geoms that you can use. And if you click on one of these, so say, for example, we looked at geom bar, it will give you a nice rundown of examples that you can use and the different aesthetics that you can specify. So you can really heavily customize what you want. Okay, well, I think that will do for this video. The R file that I've went through today, I've put a link to in the description, so you can run through it for yourself, which will help with your understanding of how this works. Try changing some things like the variables used, or the fill colors, or even the geoms. If you have any questions, just put them in the comment section, and I'll happily get back to you. Stay tuned for more videos, and subscribe if you don't want to miss them.